Hello, in this video I want to talk about cartels. Cartels occur in the market st structure oligopoly when firms collude and act like a monopoly. So here we want to consider a market that has the inverse market demand function of P equals 100 minus 2Q. Uh, there are only a few firms, so this is going to be an oligopoly. So there are four firms in this market and they all are identical in terms of cost structures and their constant marginal cost is equal to 20. All right, so the premise is, suppose the four firms form a profit maximizing cartel and they all agree that each firm will produce exactly the same output level. So whatever the profit maximizing output level is, they will just split it in four uh, shares and each produce one of those shares. So the big question is, how much does each firm produce? All right, so first thing I just want to make sure that we are aware of is, what's a cartel? So a cartel is a group of suppliers that agree to restrict competition and keep prices high. Of course, uh, restricting output levels and raising prices is exactly what a monopoly is doing. So a cartel is usually thought of a... Uh, you know, a group of firms that get together and act like a monopoly. Okay, so that's good. Now let's, uh, sorry, let's just go through and solve this problem then. So the first thing I'm just going to go through in, in a few steps here. So we know that the inverse demand function is equal to 100 minus 2Q. Now using this one, we can then find the revenue function for uh, the cartel so that's just price times quantity so you know we just plug in the price and multiply by quantity i'm not gonna multiply that out but we can just use that and then find the marginal revenue which is always equal to same intercept twice the slope okay so uh, in order to maximize profit, any firm, and a monopoly is certainly uh, the best example of this, will decide to produce a quantity for which marginal revenue equals marginal cost. So this is how we're going to find uh, the quantity. So I, I take the marginal revenue, I set it equal to marginal cost. I have that 4Q equals 100 minus 20, 80, Q equals 20. All right, so that's good. Now we know how much the monopoly should be producing in order to maximize pri uh, profit. Uh, of course, we could easily find, let me just do that maybe. So what is the price that this they would uh, uh, charge? Well, that'll be 100 minus two times 20. The price would be equal to 60 here. But, uh, you know, in addition to uh, deciding to be a cartel, the firms also agreed to split the output level equally. So therefore, the firm output level is equal to total output divided by four. So each firm is going to produce five units. All right, we can just uh, check uh, how much money are they going to be making just for fun. So uh, the profit of each firm, let's say this is firm one, the price they will be facing is 60. The cost of producing or the average cost is 20 because the marginal cost is constant. And each firm is producing five units. So each firm will be making $200, if you will. All right, so that's the, actually the question I had in front of me. I just want to do one extension, which is on the next slide. All right, so right now we know that each firm is producing five units and the market price is equal to 60. And by doing this, each firm, say firm I here, is making $200. Uh, dollars. So the question is here, does each firm have an incentive to cheat? That is, does any of the firms have an incentive to violate the agreement to restrict output to five units? And the answer is yes. 
and it's pretty easy to sleep, see for, you know, when a firm produces one more unit or when they sell one unit, the price or the margin of revenue that they get is 60, but the marginal cost of producing that unit is only 20. So for every unit that they produce and sell, they're making some profit, 40. So there is a real incentive for firms to raise their output level. Let's just do an example here. So suppose that one firm, say firm one, decides to produce, oh, let's just do six units, whereas the firms two, three, and four, they all produce five units. So uh, while this firm's uh, change in output level will have a small effect on the market price, so I'm just gonna calculate what the market price is gonna be. So it'd be 100 times, a uh, minus two times six plus five plus five plus five. That is uh, 21, 100 minus 42. So the price would fall from 60 to 50, 58. And the firm one will then be making 58 minus 20 times six, because they're producing six units now, which is actually equal to 228. All right, so clearly 228 is greater than 200, and that is the incentive that each firm has to cheat. All right, here's another thing. Suppose all firms recognize that they can make more money if they cheat by producing one more uh, unit of the good. Well, if that's the case, then they all produce six units, and therefore the total output will be... 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6, or 4 times 6 is 24. Price in the market will fall from 60 to uh, 50, what's that, 48, 52. And each firm's profit, just using firm 1 here as an example, 52 minus 20 times 6. I'm going to have to use the calculator. Let's calculate that. 52 minus 20 times 6, 192. All right, so here you can see that if all firms cheat on the agreement by producing a little bit more, then all firms are worse off. Uh, so, uh, you know, here's the dilemma with the cartels and collusion in general. It is, it's very hard to get a firm, all the firms to to stay within the agreements of the collusion. And in fact, uh, unless there is some other secondary agreements that we can, uh, you know, that the firms can agree on, it's gonna be uh, very likely that a cartel will in fact fail. Now, given that cartels are very hard to uh, maintain, how would a firm then optimally uh, decide on how much to produce well, that's what the Kono equilibrium is all about. Thank you.